What's going on, guys? I decided to write a theory, or a pre-write, of how I think the story of The Last of Us Part 3 might play out. So The Last of Us Part 1 was love. The Last of Us Part 2 was hate. I have a feeling The Last of Us Part 3 will be redemption, reconciliation, requiem. Now Ellie still hasn't come to complete peace with the idea of her immunity being wasted. She wants her life to mean something. She wants her life to matter, to serve a greater purpose. The Fireflies are still alive and well, currently recuperating and surviving at the casino on Catalina Island, California. A huge base with tons of supplies, over 200 plus survivors, all ready, willing, able, and eager to try for a new cure. And there's no telling if a cure would even work, as making a vaccine for a fungal infection isn't the most logical option. And there's still so many infected out there, posing a threat to humanity regardless. But we know the Fireflies, they seek to restore democracy. So without a doubt, they'll definitely try. And if that opportunity presents itself, and somehow Ellie got word of it, I believe she would also be more than willing to try again. And this could prove to be yet another emotional roller coaster for the series. I picture The Last of Us Part 3 going something like this. Several months pass by, with Ellie excluding herself from any interactions with her friends and family in Jackson. Ellie and Jackson become almost like oil and water, side eyes and awkward silences galore. Jackson lost Joel, and they lost Jesse. Their leaders, Maria and Tommy, are demoralized, separated. Ellie still feels guilt, shame, and disappointment after the events of The Last of Us Part Two. She left Dina and JJ to chase Abby. Tommy's still grieving for Joel. He's suffering both a battered eye and leg, with the addition of being left by his wife, Maria. They all bear some level of resentment towards Ellie. Everyone is hurting. Everyone needs to heal. Ellie doesn't feel deserving of love. It takes her a while to work up the courage to make an attempt to resolve, restore, and renew her relationships with Dina, Tommy, Maria, and more. At first, she shows it non-verbally, by pushing herself to take on multiple errands, tasks, hunts, patrols, and more. Anything to stay active. Anything to keep her mind of what she's done, what people think of her. The town takes notice of her compulsions and obsessions, and they urge the people closest to her to check up on her. This sparks the much-needed clearing the air and heart-to-heart -heart that our favorite post-apocalyptic cast needs. One of these days, word spreads and eventually gets around to Jackson that the Fireflies, now relocated at Catalina Island Casino, California, are nearly ready to attempt a new cure about six to seven years after the failed project in Salt Lake City. They have most of the research data and procedural info from St. Mary Hospital, but they're still looking for anything they can get. Medical supplies, doctors, people with a history of performing procedures, surgeries, people who show any level of immunity to the cordyceps. And after hearing or seeing this, Ellie becomes conflicted. She's thinking about how she's done this before, how she made that trip with Joel, how she once left the only family she had. She can't hurt them like that again. But she's thinking, maybe this time, maybe things can be different. Maybe it'll work. And that can go down one of two ways. One, Ellie tells her people straight out that she's going to California. This is what she wants. Her friends and family will have to accept that, and they may or may not take the trip with her. Two, she continues to revive her bonds with the people she loves, and then disappears. She heads to California alone, unable to confront her family with such a heavy burden after only just recently building up their trust again. So of course, the bulk of the game, like the middle, would ideally be filled with the catharsis and therapy of travel, memories, Ellie encountering and assisting survivors, and more. This theory of mine covers just the start and end of the story. So towards the end, it all comes full circle. Ellie's back in California, but this time, not for vengeance, not for hatred, but for hope, for salvation. Hope and salvation for not only herself, but for the world. Now at the casino, Ellie walks in. People are moving, talking, working, researching, like the most active, most intense auditorium or office you can imagine. And Ellie, nervously, shakingly, stutters. I don't mean. Everything and everyone goes quiet. All eyes and ears shift to Ellie. Naturally, no one believes her. She tries to prove it. She shows her bite mark, but out of nervousness forgets that she hid it with a tattoo years ago. The fireflies grow irritated 
They think she's crazy, that she's wasting their damn time, spewing nonsense. They're getting louder and louder, starting to escort Ellie out. But then, a familiar face overhears the outroar. Abby, a reinstated member of the Fireflies, sees Ellie and hesitates for a moment. She remembers how things went down, the pain she put Ellie through, the pain Ellie put her through. But since the theater, she knows what Ellie is and realizes what this may mean for not only her people, but for the world. And she rushes in, muscles past the crowd and speaks for her. She tells them that Ellie isn't lying. She confirms that she was the girl from Utah, from St. Mary Hospital. She reminds them of the outpost that her father, Jerry Anderson, used for the cure. Many of them grow even angrier at the thought of what happened that day. The memory of what Joel did is still fresh for anyone who was there, and for anyone who lost family and friends there. But Abby, she's grieved. She took revenge, and she's moved on the best she could, in an admirable act of maturity and flooring humility. Abby steps up and offers to head the procedure, to perform the surgery. And given she's the daughter of Jerry Anderson, with the limited knowledge passed down from him, and the help of any other competent doctors on site, Abby may be the one major component in successfully completing the surgery. The fireflies ease down. They take it all in. They come to terms with what this all means. Many of them there now were at St. Mary Hospital. They remember the hope they once had. They now have that hope once more. Ellie and Abby stare at each other for a while. No words exchanged. No words needed. Only thoughts and memories they share. Abby nods. Ellie nods back. And Ellie continues on with Abby and the Fireflies for preparation. Several hours later, back on a hospital bed, this feels all too familiar. Ellie is sick with anxiety, overflowing with every emotion, memory, and experience leading up to this point. Her entire life is slowing down and recollecting itself in front of her eyes. The trip with Joel from Boston to Salt Lake City, blending in with her trip from Jackson to California. The anesthesia kicks in. Ellie slowly passes out with an uneasy smile on her face, knowing she's doing this again, knowing she'll die, but this time on her terms, on her accord, on her own volition, knowing she's finally giving to the world rather than taking from it, knowing her life matters to more than just herself and the people who love her. Everything goes black. Whether or not the world is cured or saved, is left up to the player's interpretation. Was Ellie's sacrifice worth it? Was this the end she really wanted? Winning this fight would mean the eventual resurgence of life on Earth. Abby would have finished her father's work, and Ellie would have finished what she first set out to do. Life has the chance to continue without the hindrance or the chains of the cordyceps. The survivors, now more than ever, have something to fight for, a light in the darkness. But if this fight was lost, if they failed, realizing they can't create a vaccine for a fungal infection, realizing they may not even be able to distribute it, realizing that it doesn't even work, then Ellie, truly and finally, is the last of us. But I believe some fights are worth losing. You can learn from a loss. The Fireflies can learn from Ellie. They can take samples, run data, figure something out. The survivors can live on and endure the best they can hoping for groundbreaking news, hoping for an advantage, a break in discovery. Well, that's just one of many paths I'd like to see the story of The Last of Us Part 3 take, and I absolutely cannot wait to see what Naughty Dog cooks up. How do you see Ellie's story ending? If you were writing The Last of Us Part 3, I'd love to see how you'd complete Ellie's story. So until next time, endure and survive. Peace.